Okay. Can I, can I give you guys some good news? Oh, some good news. Did you have a question? No, no, no. I was going to ask if you have... Uh, do you have any good news? <laughs> let's hear it. Okay, we'll, we'll <laughs> edit that out. Let's, yeah. get, let's go ahead, get the good news. And go. Hey, uh, I've been feeling the need for some good news lately. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> I'm glad you asked, Andy. Church pays off nearly 8 million of communities' debt... Whoa. Community's medical debt, hands, feet, and wallet of Jesus, according to the Christian Post. A teenage boy known for attending church alone without his parents had an opportunity to share the gospel with his father after the church partnered with a national program to pay off around eight million of the community's medical debt. The Altar Fellowship is a non-denominational church in Johnson City, Tennessee, led by Pastor Maddie Montgomery and his wife, Candace. Montgomery is an evangelist and author of Scary God and Lovely Things in Ugly Places. I have no idea about those books, but check them out. Anyways, how, bi- how big is that church? Does it give you any sense? You probably don't know. That's a Christian post. They don't give you the details you, you don't want. get any details. Um, I'm just kidding. I'm contractually obligated to crap on the Christian Post every time I read something from them, even though we use them a lot. So thanks. Uh, Montgomery said a friend of his called to share that he'd had a dream of one day paying off people's medical debts. The pastor described his friend as a businessman within the community who, quote, loves the Lord and came up with the idea to help people through an organization known as RIP Medical Debt. So what's the name of the church? Montgomery. Nope, Altar Fellowship, non-denominational in Johnson City, Tennessee. Altar Fellowship. They paid. They cannot be the only the Altar church, Fellowship. The church paid? The church partnered with the R, their organization that is RIP okay. Medical Debt. Rest in peace. I think it's awesome. Uh, I'm just, uh, I that don't know. That is good news. I don't know how many churches, that's why it's interesting to see. I, I don't know how the breakdown is. I don't know how many churches that have like $8 million sitting in their pocket to go like, hey, we can do this. $8 million. That's a crazy. And also Johnson City, Tennessee sounds like a really small town. So they negotiated it down. They did not spend. Who have some serious medical problems. They did not spend $8 million. Uh, oh, so here we go. As Montgomery explained. The organization negotiates with collectors to buy the legal right or claim on a debt. According to the pastor, the combined medical debt within the six counties closest to the church was about $8 million, and the church was able to buy all the debt for fifty grand. So, oh, good news. And so it could be a smaller church, and they- fifty grand is doable. And guess what, people? If you're, if you're serious, like when you go in to do medical things, advocate for yourself because if you just tell them, what's the cash price? What if I go outside insurance? You yeah. can negotiate the hell out of those places in a way that you would not believe possible. So there's was, a there's a little pro tip. Was that a uh, pun intended there to negotiate the hell out of Ooh, their prices? Well done. I think that's what they did. Yeah, I that, think so too. That conversation's been going around about hospitals actually putting their prices, uh, you know, public how much is that mri yeah nobody knows the pastor said his church is located in a rural er rural area where many residents live in poverty and struggle with addiction while he's unsure if the church will do something like this again he expressed that it is is a joy to give and wish people didn't have to go into debt over medical expenses um that, that kid that goes to church um his dad called him in and said Hey, that church you go to, it's called the altar, right? And the kid said, yeah. And the dad said, your church just paid off all my medical bills. Oh, dude. Wow. Um, and he was just really confounded by that. He thought, why did they do this? And his son got the opportunity to share the gospel with his father because of the giving of the church. That's pretty awesome. It doesn't look like a big church. I've got their website up. Um, and, and, but which, which means like even 50,000 might've been a stretch potentially for them. So it's pretty cool that, that they that they went and oh, did yeah. this. Also, Absolutely. props to them. They own the altar.org domain. Not bad. Well done. You guys, uh, Altar Fellowship, Johnson City, Tennessee, you're ahead of the game. They got to it right before the satanic death metal band could buy it. So uh, I feel like there's a there's a devil band with Altar in the name somewhere. Yeah, that's a, that is a really cool story, though. You're welcome. Thank you. Wherever we go from here and... It could get dark. Downers only. I just wanted to set the tone. Say, hey, it's not all bad. Sometimes we, fl- so listeners, sometimes we fly by the seat of our pants and and we don't have a set of core topics ready to go from and we just go where the spirit leads us. Yeah. Our pants have wings today, I think. They do have, well. Mine left me. We be flying. <laughs> <laughs> our <laughs> pants have wings. Uh, that's good. I like uh, that. So 
since you brought this up about the church paying for somebody's bills. They're not going to sponsor your kid to go to Cooperstown, okay? <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to happen. You know, you beat Just me to get the punchline. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, so I, I am a landlord. Caleb's been really sick. <laughs> I, I am a landlord, and uh, this month I get a phone call from a... My tenant was having some financial difficulties. I think she lost her job, but I get a, a phone call, and it's a part of the Catholic diocese, but oh. I... I um, and they're like, hi, so-and-so reached out to us. I guess she's your tenant, and we're going to be paying um, the rest of her rent for the month. Wow. Four days later, I received a check from, you know, it's part of the Catholic Church, but there was a name to it because I looked it up, and they're everywhere. They're worldwide. I'm incredible. I'm like, I'm talking to the guy, and he's like, oh, yeah, I used to live in California, and I live in Idaho, and yeah, we just, I volunteer, and when people, I'm like, well, is this really going to happen? If somebody asks, it's going to happen. Whoa. I'm like, Wow, Dude, that's that, amazing. That can be life changing stuff for people as well. Like, if it was a bridge yeah. to, you know, move maybe probably to a different job. And yeah, absolutely. Hmm. It's incredible. Lifeline is that's, that's the word. Yeah. You know, we, we talk, what catches the headlines normally is bad news or an abusive pastor or whatever. We, and yeah, we cover that stuff too. And that's important to bring into the light because you would, I would like to see churches do a better job at sniffing those types of people out before they're on staff, but it's nice. And I, I do believe, and so I'm going to say it because I do believe that uh, the church is a, is on balance, a way better, bigger force for good than yeah. bad. The problem is when it goes bad, it's terrible because you got like the weight of God and eternity and that, that can really blow up in a way that's terrible. But, yeah. you know, if it bleeds, it leads. And that, that applies to this podcast too sometimes, but it's important to know and to search for the things that spark joy. So, you know. We know if we get boosted views, this is really on you, uh, our listeners and viewers. If, if you start really sharing this episode around, then maybe we can do some more positive things. Yeah, and if not, we're going to have to resort to selling our bodies like <laughs> Jeff is doing on behalf of his son because his son won't go out and raise money. Jeff is on...